voice of praise. Shout unto God for the victory. Hey, 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 give the Lord a shout of praise. I got to praise, I got to praise, and I got to get it out. I got to praise. I, I got to praise.
Jesus and all he's done for me. When I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I want to dance, 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 dance all night, all night, all night, all night. When I think about Jesus and all he's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I want to shout, shout.
Jesus, how he set me free, I want to shout, 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 shout all night, all night, all night, all night. When I think about Jesus, all he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I want to praise, 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 praise all night, all night. Just hold right where you're at. The Lord's wanting to speak to us. Just hold on right where you're at. There's a shift of the Spirit. Just close your eyes. Let the Spirit of the Lord work in this place and do what He has orchestrated already. He on the way, a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, a the winds of the south. I speak to the winds of the north, the east, and the west. I say, don't look to the left or to the right, for I am the Lord, and the day is not well spent. I say again, the day is not well spent. It's not over. God, have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. For I have allowed the darkness to sweep over you. It has come over your spirit. It has roamed in your home for reasons. I have designed it. It has shown you things about yourself that you were oblivious to. 
but I have brought to your attention the things that I must extract out of you, saith the Lord. I am God, and I command you, put your hands to the plow. Do not look back, but look forward, for I am the God that is working a work in your area, in your day. I'm not done doing that which I desire to do, for I am pouring out my spirit. You will see, you will see the favor of the Lord. If you feel like wailing, if you feel like interceding, travailing, amen, we're not going to go any further until we give it completely over to the Lord in this place today. Would you let him work and do what he desires to do among us? That's it, let him work. Come on, thrust at the feet of Jesus. Dig just a little bit deeper for a moment in the presence of the Lord. Oh, come on, it's your time, it's your season, it's your day. Oh, God, I'm looking ahead. I'm looking forward to the things that you are going to do, God. Oh, we need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Won't you find someone to pray with for a moment while we feel after the presence of the Lord? Would you move around and find someone to pray with, someone that you can join together with a prayer of encouragement that the Spirit of the Lord will work in this place as He has already set out to do, but I don't believe that He's finished yet. There's a charge coming over God's people. There's an encouragement that's coming over God's people. It's already started. In the name of Jesus, Lord, open our eyes and be delighted in your ways today. Open our eyes and let us be delighted in your path today, God. For, Lord, that we walk, God, upright before you to accomplish your plan, your will, your mission. Oh, God, every individual, I pray that you would touch their mind. I pray that you would touch their heart. I pray that you would touch their spirit in this place, God. Oh, God, where I feel your presence rising in the hearts of men right now. I feel your presence encouraging, God. We're not walking around in defeat. Our God is a triumphant God. Lord, you're triumphant in all of your ways. You're a victorious God. Lord, everything the devil has said and lied to the people of God about, I pray, God, we're going to take back the victory. We're going to take back what the enemies robbed us of in the name of Jesus, in our families, in our businesses, on our jobs, in our schooling, in our relationships, in our services to you, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would let a spirit, God, of courageousness sweep over. Let courage come over every individual in this place, God. I pray, Lord, that you would take our minds and pry it open, take our 
our hearts and open the door of it. Open our spirits up, God, where you can reach the very confinements of our being today. Lord, reach a massage in the depths of our soul today, Lord. Every crack and crevice of our being that you would expose it. Let it open up for the glory of God and the restoration of your power to run deep within our avenues today, God. Oh, would you do what only you can do today and that's restore that which the canker worms have eaten up. Restore that which has been damaged, God. Restore that which has been lost in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you would bring twofold, threefold, a hundredfold back. Lord, every dime that's been stolen from the people of God, I pray, God, that there would be restoration and a restoring over finances, God. I pray that you would touch families and relationships. We give you glory. Your presence is here. There is a cloud that's going to follow your people this day. There is a cloud. If you follow the children of Israel, you will follow the people of God at my church in the name of Jesus. Uh, Come on, focus on your well-being right now. Focus on your well-being. Focus on your relationship with God right now. Focus on getting repositioned in the kingdom of God right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you ought to be rejoicing right now. Some of you have seen the, the crack of the sun coming through darkness. You have seen just a, a sliver of God starting to work and answer prayers. You ought, you ought to be encouraged. You ought to be shouting and dancing in your heart right now. Amen. Don't let the devil get the best because you don't see the full development of the will of God or the miracle of God. You begin to rejoice at the size of the cloud of a man's hand and you begin to thank God for the rain that's coming. You begin to thank God for the revival that's coming. You begin to thank God for the restoration that's coming. I'm going to build on hope today. I'm going to build upon the small things of God today. I'm going to build upon God's destination for my life. I'm going to build upon God's plan for my family. I'm going to build upon the will of God, upon my relationship with God. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, there's a prophetic spirit of the Lord in this place right now. There is a prophetic spirit of the Lord working and moving. Let the Lord use you. Let the Lord use you. Speak to your neighbor. If it's in alignment with the will of God, speak to your neighbor. Don't fear nor fret. Be a servant, be a vehicle for the kingdom of God right now. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. such a powerful presence of the Lord in this place. It's evident this morning that God 
does not want to launch the message for this new year. But I'll tell you what's evident this morning is that I look at people that have been in some of the most excruciating situations. And I look at people that just remain to stay, to stay and to stand in living for God when one layer of victory has been pulled off of you after another. You didn't fall. You didn't backslide. You might have felt like it. You didn't lose out with your focus and your confidence in God. Some of you have gone through your most difficult time that you could ever imagine. While we have been there for you and with you, we could never tell you that we could understand in total what you have experienced. Some of you, your minds have wandered, your hearts have gone faint. Your will to live has went extremely dim. I could with confidence say that some of you would have wished that you could have died. Am I right? But in all that you have been through and all that you have experienced and been exposed to, it did not take you out, nor did it bring you down, nor did it destroy you. I can only reflect to when David came back as a king to his gift. His gift was the city of Ziglag. It was a place of refuge. It was a place of restoration. It was a place of refreshing. However, when he came back to what was given to him, when he, when he came to his gift, there was smoke that was in the air as he approached Ziglag. The closer that he came to his gift, the closer that he came to the position of what God had favored him with, all of a sudden he began to sink in despair. That which he had built had been destroyed by the hand of the enemy. The homes of comfort had been set with flames as they began to finally burn the remains of that structure. Men after men, Leaders from the top down to the soldiers began to frant. They began to speak evil. They be, to the place that they wanted to destroy David's life. Because while they were doing things that was important and urgent, they were away on a mission. But while they were away on a mission, the enemy came in like a flood. In that flood, there was subtraction. In that flood was destruction. In that flood was a tremendous loss. In that attack from the enemies, it was not just them. They were left to only feel the agony and the pain and the defeat. But it was the families that were escorted out of their comfort zones. It was the family, the wives, and the children of this great army that was escorted out of the king's gift, Ziglag, down to parade by men that had no integrity, to dance with men that despised the work of God and the things of God and the joys of God. While those enemies begin to tamper with David and his army's possessions, it was in the heart of David as he pursued God and sought God's will for what to do, God began to instruct David, as I instruct you today, do not leave one blessing behind. Do not let the enemy have preeminence over your possession. Do not let the enemy have the ability to overshadow your presence nor your future. Do not let your enemy dictate to you the ability to lose everything that you've ever fought for, to renege and forfeit everything that you have invested in. And it was there in the prayer room that God spoke to David, and he said, you know what, son, go ahead and go after what is yours. It was David that declared to his men that were fearful, it was David that declared to his men that were 
defeated at its greatest level, mentally exhausted, emotionally traumatized, physically beat down. And David says to his men, as I look to this congregation today, I declare to you today, we will pursue. Empty chairs, I declare that they will be filled back up. Vacant prayer rooms that have been unoccupied, I declare that they will fill back up. Revival that seemed to be so far in our grasp, I declare revival at my church, revival in Prairieville, revival in Ascension Parish, and revival in the state of Louisiana. I declare to this magnificent audience that has been so dedicated to the work of God and the plan of God. Some of you, by the sweat of your brow, erected this building. Some of you, by splinters and cuts and bruises and wounds, that we've continued to enhance the kingdom of God and the local assembly. Yet those that have come with hours that would go by so, so tough and so hard, and we worked to have a place that was modest. We worked to have a place that was presentable. We worked to have a place that we too can bring our families and to come and enjoy the presence of the Lord. But yet in your distress, in your loss, in your subtraction, you have found yourself to be overwhelmed by the attacks of the adversary. But it is over. Somebody ought to shout, it's over. Amen. Amen. I'm staring at I'm staring at debris. I'm staring at smoke. I'm staring at things that don't seem possible anymore. But honey, when God's in it, there is a quick erection when God's in it. There is a plan that will go beyond anything we've ever made. It doesn't take God long to fix anything that has been broke and go beyond that. It doesn't take God years to bring restoration. In a moment, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, God can do it and turn it around for us. So I say to this congregation that you have allowed your minds to drift while I begin to expound upon the word of God this morning. You've allowed your mind to wonder what you have subtracted from you. What did you lose this year? What was taken out of you? What was pride out of your hands that was so precious and so valuable to you? Those very things I declare to the church. Do not stop fighting for what belongs to you. Do not stop fighting for the victories of the Lord in your life, in your home, in your family, and in your church. You pursue after the gifts of God. They began to chase down. They found men that they didn't have same beliefs. They found men of opposite faith. They found men that were abusing their families. It was at that time that David and his men came and they recovered. Everybody say all. all. Say it loud with conviction, all. all. The Bible said that they recovered all that was taken from them. But let me, let me give you the rest of the story. Honey, they didn't only get back what they lost. They got back what they did not have. Amen. They left that place packing treasures, packing uh, uh, gifts, packing blessings that they did not work for, that they did not labor for, that they did not obligate themselves into or borrow for. Amen. When God gets ready. When God gets ready. Honey, you don't have to work triple overtime to make it happen. You don't have to exhaust yourself to make it happen. Amen. God was on the beginning and standing on the end at the same time. All we have to do is to get into the will of God and know what God placed where and begin to walk in the mind and the will and the purpose of God. I want to tell you, I want the will of God. I want the will of God. And as I conclude my sermon, amen, for this year, 
Amen. This should be a time that you make up your mind to go forward. Laying down your discouragement. Putting aside your differences. Pushing behind you what has expired with time. Putting your heartaches and your hardships and what didn't go right and what went wrong and what broke and what was bad. Amen. I, I got a feeling that if you will start to turn it around and say, oh, while the Lord was helping me to go through brokenness, he was building me up for excellence. He was motivating me for victory. He was developing me to be triumphant. He was taking me in a low place and he was pulling me back and allowing me to go through life structure so he can sling me to a mountaintop somewhere. I wish that we would stand right now and I wish that everything that you have lost in the last year or the last five years, I wish that you would lift up your hands before God and that you would start to declare the goodness of the Lord. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how complicated it is. I don't care how far the setback was. I don't care how stripped the situation was. It doesn't matter how much loss, how much subtraction. Amen. If God gets ready to do it, honey, there there's not a devil in hell that can stop it. There's not an enemy that can set it back. I declare the victory of the Lord today. I declare the power of God over every mind, every man, every woman, every young person, every child in this place. I declare victory for the Lord. Victory for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I want to give you a moment. Don't sit yet. I want to give you a moment to exercise your confidence and your trust in God. Right where you're at, whatever you've lost, whatever you've had taken from you, I want you to have a celebration in the act that you've gotten it all back and in the event that you've acquired more than what was taken away from you. Can you do that? Come on, make up your mind. You're going to do better. You're going to be greater. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be more spiritual. You're going to go further in the kingdom of God. You're going to have more blessings of God. You're going to have a sound mind, a well body, a healthy soul. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ma, 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 ma. Uh. Uh. Put your hand over your mind right now and declare the same mind that was in Christ Jesus that it comes in you right now. Come on, anoint your head right now. Anoint your head. Let the mind of Christ come in you. Let the mind of Christ come in you. Let the helmet of salvation come over you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let godly thoughts, let pure thoughts, let innovative thoughts, God. Let the thoughts of yet success come in my mind. Let thoughts of evangelism come in my mind. Let thoughts of mission come in my mind. Let thoughts of being used by you come in my mind, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, I feel it. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength there's renewal in this place right now thank you Jesus 
Thank you, Jesus. Turn around and greet somebody. Welcome them into the house of the Lord. Why don't we go to the Lord in prayer this morning? I see several not here today. We want to hold them up in prayer, but the knock and we want to pray that the Lord will touch him and strengthen him. Tell him he's got he's got six days and he'll be here on the seventh day to hear the New Year's message. The Lord held him back because he needs to hear, and I know he will by internet. Amen. We appreciate every one of you. We're excited for what God's doing. If you have an unspoken request, would you signify that this morning by the lifting of your hands? Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's hold off right there. I just feel like we're going to pray over, I, I, don't, I don't know why I feel this. I feel like we're going to pray over finances. I feel that that's what God wants me to pray over. That's what we're going to pray over. I'm not picking up an offering. Don't get nervous. I'm going to pray over your finances. If you need a financial blessing with the mentality that you're going to bless the kingdom of God with what's rightfully God's, I want you to kind of move out in the aisle. I don't, I don't do this often. I feel it strongly this morning. I feel it very strong. You, you can come down, but you don't even have, you can just get out in the aisles, and that's fine if you want to come down. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Just lift up your hand and say, I receive it. Lord raises <clears throat> financial advancements job opportunity, business opportunity, ownership opportunity, lateral changes, whatever you need to do, God, whatever you're wanting to do, I'm going to follow the Holy Ghost and pray over your people right now. I'm praying, God, that you will take and you'll take what they possess and that you will stretch it, God. Let them get the better deal than the enemy. Let them begin to get the most for their money in the name of Jesus. Lord, increase comes in multiple ways, not only in a raise, but it comes, God, in the wisdom of God, helping us in the expenditures of our fundings. God, I pray over the spending. I pray, Lord, that you will bless. I pray, God, that you will let the church this year get the best deals. Lord, let them find the cheapest gas. Let them find the cheapest food, Lord. I pray, Lord, whatever they need to buy in the name of Jesus, let them find the best price. Lord, to be able to make that purchase. I claim it in the name of Jesus. I pray over this church's finances. I pray, Lord, over every household finances right now for the favor and the glory and the blessings of the Lord that you will receive all glory, that you will receive all honor, God, that you will be praised and magnified for it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Just take a little leap for joy. A little leap for joy because he's already done it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You, you can return back to your seat if you need prayer. Just come forward. I want us to take our other needs that we've mentioned already to the Lord in prayer. God, we come to you today. We're so delighted to have the privilege of bringing our needs and our petitions before you our unspoken requests, God, whatever the need may be, our church family that may be in need of a touch over their body, those that are working, that you will strengthen them today. I pray, God, that the Holy Ghost will work and we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you glory and we give you honor. Would you lift up your hands and thank him for what he's already doing in the name of Jesus? Would you thank him for what he's doing already in the name of Jesus? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt you today, God. We exalt you in this place today, God. We need you in this place today. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I'm inviting our ushers to come to wait upon you this morning, give you an opportunity to give your first offering, your first tithings, and a brand new year. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of giving out of the things that you've already given to us. We ask your blessings upon this finances, upon this offering and tithings today in Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. amen. Why don't you give unto the Lord this morning? I want to bring some announcements to you this coming Tuesday night, right here, this Tuesday night. We'll be texting you. Uh, by our church text. If you do not have church text, please see my wife uh, to make sure you get connected. We're going to be doing a round table. Now, that doesn't mean we'll have tables set up. It's just going to be just a casual setting. You don't have to wear a suit. You can come casual. There'll be food before uh, our meeting that will be here in this auditorium. Uh, come for prayer, please. But uh, we're going to be having a brainstorm and a speak out covering these particular categories, and then there will be a general category as well. Uh, we're going to be t discussing church growth, uh, brainstorming with ideas, methods, ways that we have or may not have tried that we want to implement. We'll be discussing Sunday school and the future of our Sunday school for this church in the very near future and uh, the direction that we need to go. We'll be discussing church fellowship, church fellowship which is going to be very important. We'll also be discussing My Life House Church. Now, I'll challenge you to, to study the Word of God, but I promise you that you're going to find that there was more church in the house than there was in a sanctuary. I'm not against, now, before you put, thank you, I'm not against sanctuary church, but uh, we're going to be discussing possibly a, a quarter uh, uh, sample run of maybe having church and homes across our city, uh, preferably on the same Tuesday night in lieu of our midweek service. Uh, it will do a lot of good things. Uh, I know churches even locally that have more than tripled their congregation uh, through having a uh, house church. And so that is something that we will be discussing and, and, and a very touchy subject, and maybe you can contribute to it, uh, is mental health that we're experiencing across uh, our world, really, but uh, also in our congregations across, especially apostolic congregations, that we are taking a different approach and trying to aid our, our saints of God with to enhance them in their mental health. And so I'm going to ask you with these particular categories that we will text to you, that you, you will formulate your words and that you will be precise in your presentation and that you will also be brief in your presentation of suggestion. Now, with those fancy words, that does not put you at bay. Amen. I want to invite you to join in. I just want to make sure we get the most bang for our buck. And uh, so we'll, we'll come in here, uh, have a wonderful time, and uh, come a little early for prayer and for snack, be some food served. And then giving you an opportunity, amen, to, to get involved in the vision of the church. And uh, it's a great time. So we ask that you will be here on this coming Tuesday. Also, there will be prayer and fasting. Uh, we are going back to our quarterly prayer and fasting uh, this year. And so on the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th, that's next Sunday uh, at church, we'll have the 5 o'clock on Sunday the 7 o'clock on Monday, and the 7 o'clock on Tuesday, the following week. Uh, that's next Sunday uh, evening, starting prayer and fasting. Also, there will be ladies' prayer meeting, and that is Friday, January the 14th at 7 p.m., and I hope that we kind of mix them. But go back one more. I'll go up. There you go. Communion will be on the 16th. Uh, everybody say the 16th. Amen. Amen. That's not this coming Sunday, but the next. Uh, normally, we do communion on the Tuesday that we break fast, but I just felt a little check in my spirit, and this year I want to make sure because some folks cannot come uh, on Tuesday because of work or because of distance, 
uh, but we will be having communion on the 16th. If you receive that, say amen. 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 So also I want to make mention to you, uh, before I go to this, I want to make mention that uh, we will be uh, posting our monthly calendars. Uh, we will also uh, give opportunities for many of our department heads to access that calendar before, uh, the, at least uh, the, the week before that we need to print them, uh, our department heads, that, that they will have those dates put in, and we'll go over that in a leadership meeting coming up. Amen. I want to just say I am appalled at the many of you, uh, I'm sorry, the many of you that uh, have participated in, in your Bible reading. And uh, I want to make what we do for God a big deal. I want to make what you do for God a big deal. And uh, as I call your names, if you'll get your camera, I want Sister Julie Nakan to come and receive a certificate. And uh, that's right, <laughs> reading, reading her Bible, just posed. We, we're going we're gonna to make sure we... Thank you. Just stay right here, sis. We're going to take a group picture. Sister Norsworthy. Amen. That's awesome. I'm sorry you're going to have to take a picture with me. Whatever side you prefer, I'm good. There's your certificate, sis. Thank you. Brother Norsworthy. Whatever side's your best side. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you, brother. Sister Teresa. Now, these folks have read their Bible through this year. That's tremendous. Sister Lisa, are you able to join us? Are you able to join us? Well, would you come join us? Yeah, all right, amen, you get it, and we're, we're all right with that, amen, but you're going to have to take a picture with pastor, you can come right here, whatever side's best for you, amen, she says, I have no ugly side, so it doesn't matter, you want to hold that? Why, sure, thank you, thank you, brother Duvall, would you join us? Thank you, sir. What's your better side? What's that your best side? Yeah, I don't have one. Me neither. Awesome. Sister Diane Bro, she's not here because she's working. Amen. <laughs> Look. Good sense of humor. Brother Jason Walker. Sister. Go, Tro, you can come join me. <laughs> All of her sides are good. <laughs> Somebody snuck this in there. Brother Go, Tro. <laughs> are you ready for this? This is wonderful. Adelaide, would you come up here? <laughs> would you hold this? And would you pose? Read her Bible through. I think. Awesome. And if you can kind of scoot in a little tighter, and we're going to get a group picture of those that are here. Look up over here, sis. Yeah, there you go. Thank y'all so much. Give them a big hand again. Thank you. Each year, we promote reading the Bible through. We do it different ways. And I may or may not join in with you this year because I do things on a every other year basis. Uh, so... If you would like to join in in reading your Bible through, we have a program that you can join in to. 
you can read or listen to it and get the same credit. Amen. But just make sure that you're getting uh, the benefit of the Word of God. And that's what we want to do. We want to encourage you to get the benefit of the Word of God and let the Word of God transform you and change your life. Amen. Why don't we stand this morning? Probably be our shortest service this year <laughs> to date. <laughs> Amen. I can't thank you enough all that you have done this past year for the kingdom of God. But I can tell you, amen, get ready, saddle up your horse. We're fixing to, we're fixing to get busy for the kingdom of God. I love you. We're here for you. We're here to minister to you. We're here to hold you up and pray for you. That is our mission and our goal. We're here to win souls. But if we only win one soul or we don't uh, achieve winning any souls this year, which I, I, I'm, I'm confident we will, amen, we're going to enjoy our walk with God. And it's not all about souls, amen, it's about us growing as well. So it's a combination, and we want the presence of God to be as real. I want you to be the best you that you can present. I want you to be the best you that you can present uh, to God. You'll be here in, in our presentation next Sunday uh, about what God uh, is desiring to do in our hearts. I'm confident I heard from the Lord. And I was reluctant whether it was going to be today. I must tell you that I wasn't convinced that it was going to be today, but I was prepared that it would be today. Amen. But uh, we're going to see what the Lord has in store. I'd love you to join us Tuesday. I'd love you to join us Tuesday with an open mind to see which direction that God wants to take us as a group. Amen. I've been guilty of doing the leadership, and I'm the pastor, and that's what I'm supposed to do. And, and I have a part of tradition deep in me, but sometimes we got to kind of branch out, and I need your help to help us to be the best my church we can be. Amen. God bless you. Why don't we lift up our hands and ask the blessings of God upon this week. We thank you for all